Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Pip Rock to Your Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a mixed media canvas that I made as a holiday gift on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show today, which is Thursday the 20th of December 2018. Um, I do this live stream show with Peg Robinson every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time over on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel which is a separate channel from this and the link to that channel is down below if you'd like to go watch the the live recording you know real-time recording of this this is the sped up version so I started this project on the show and then I finished it so there's extra footage at the end um, I didn't get it finished in the hour and a half but what I started with is a 12 by 12 canvas which I painted with the color night which is Adina Wakely um, heavy body acrylic paint and I wanted um, it the whole story behind this is that my kid who is applying for some postgraduate work um, to eventually in like five years or something get his doctorate in mathematics told me he wanted two things for presents this year that would be money and math art and I said what the heck is math art and he said you'll figure it out so this is me doing the process of figuring out what math art is and I was considering this Nautilus as a perfect example of mathematics in nature and I wanted to use the Nautilus so I made a couple gel prints and then I didn't end up using them but I'm showing you the process um, because that's what I did on the stream. Uh, one of those is pulled with white and the other one with the night color paint, which I had painted my 12 by 12 canvas with. I also have some other things that I've printed off my um, computer as well as several other gel prints that are in bright colors. Um, these things that, that you see laying around there, those are those are like homework that's been scanned, math homework, trigonometry, and you know stuff like that and I thought it would be interesting to layer some of that on there since this is math art also I was wanting to use anything that might have a geometric shape so I was looking through different prints that I have that might have something like that and I wanted bright colors he likes bright colors I was trying to go for a contrast between the bright and the dark but I ended up covering up most of the canvas uh, so me painting that dark color on there really didn't have effect but I tore up my different papers and I am gluing them down using Liquitex Matte Gel Formula Medium. This is a heavier glue, which makes it easier to glue things down to a canvas because you know the canvas has a little bit of give and it also has some texture to it. You want to make sure that everything is real stuck. So what I do is I take the paper, I spritz it a little bit with water to kind of break down the fibers and make it more pliable. And then I apply the matte gel to the back of the paper as well as the canvas. And then that gives it a double stick stick to itiveness there and fills in any of those, that textured area that's on the canvas. And then I use an old uh, gift card to kind of scrape and make sure that there isn't any bubbles or bumps or excess medium in between the paper and the the canvas to make sure that it gets a really good seal. So now I have a little bit of my collaging done and I'm starting with my focal point. This this is a image taken from a stencil that was, it's a Stencil Girl uh, product designed by Kat Kerr and the name of the stencil is Math Man, but it was too small for my project so I just simply stenciled it onto a piece of white paper with black paint, scanned it in my computer, um, enlarged it, you know, cleaned it up, enlarged it, and then printed it and sealed that printout with some fluid matte medium and a brayer. So I have an inkjet printer and that's the reason that I need to seal it because otherwise the ink will run. So this is that same stencil. You can see that the Math Man is quite a lot, of bit, lot smaller than um, the image that I made. But I, it also has some equations on it. And I have this deli paper that I have stenciled some of the equations on in black. I'm also stenciling them in white. 
I stenciled some on some of the colored papers that I had and I'm kind of continuing my collage process now that I have my main focal image down. I also know that I want to use that Nautilus shell so I'm going to end up using it as a stencil instead of using that piece that I gel printed because it just covered up too much of the canvas and I had all this interesting pattern and color and design going on. Um, in the background, I didn't want to just slap that big old thing on there and make it take over the whole canvas. So that's the reason I didn't end up using the gel print. I'll use it some in some other way, some other time. It's not a problem at all. So now I've just, I'm just using some smaller pieces and kind of thinking about my composition a little bit. Of course, when I was doing this, I was doing it live and it's a little bit hard to focus uh, on what you're doing in that type of a situation. People are talking, Peg is talking, people are asking questions in the audience. And so I, I have less focus. So I knew that I was going to want to work on this some more later so that um, I could really, you know, lock it down. So I have some more footage coming up in a bit here that will show you how I finished it up. So I'm adding some of these um, pieces of stenciled deli paper. Some of it has white, some of it has black, and I really think that it, um, you know, it kind of becomes translucent as you're gluing it on. And I think it makes some interesting finishing touches. I could use the stencil itself, like I'm doing right here, but when it when you're trying to stencil a canvas, the canvas is like has some give to it, and so when you're pushing down to stencil, it pushes away from you and can distort the image. So um, stenciling onto deli paper or tissue paper actually works really well if you're going to do a mixed media canvas. So now, remember I told you I wanted to add the Nautilus shell, and I'm using that same night colored um, paint, which is similar to a, a Payne's gray, which is really kind of almost like a really dark navy blue, but um, this is a medium body paint, and I don't have Payne's gray in medium body, so I didn't want to go completely black, but I wanted it to be dark. However, I do think it's a little bit overwhelming, and you will see how I change that um, when I finish up. So this is where I ended right here, which is the background's really bright, and I haven't really done any detailing. The first thing I did was to make a glaze. Now when you make a glaze, you can do that with water and paint, but if you put too much water in it, the glaze will become um, something that will eventually peel off. So what you want to do when you're making a glaze, which is just a translucent, tra almost transparent color, is to use glazing medium. So I'm using quinacridone gold media fluid paint from Decolart, which is kind of a almost already a liquid, but then I'm mixing it with satin glazing medium from Golden. And it makes this gorgeous, I mean, I think I think if you're gonna make a glaze, the best one to make is quinacridone gold. It's really just a it just um, adds something. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's it adds warmth. It adds uh, a little bit of a, I don't know, it's a warm color. So it also kind of gives that aged look or antiqued look to something. And also it's, it's doing the job of unifying everything because I had a lot of different layers, a lot of different pieces and parts there, and they were all screaming for attention. And I wanted, I wanted the, the guy, the math man to stand out from the background and so by putting that glaze and calming everything and unifying everything in the background, then that allows the focal image to stand out. Then I started to do a little bit more stenciling over the top with that same full strength quinacridone gold. So you can see it's, it's kind of almost a rusty color, an orangey color, but it's just indescribable. It's, it's uh, just a cool color. I think if you don't have it, you should get it. It's sometimes called quinacridone nickel azo gold. And um, in the case of the deco art, it's just straight up quinacridone gold, same color. So then I, once I did that, I was feeling that the darkness of the stenciled shell was too much. It was just too dark. And so I tape it down 
and also I'm using the tape to kind of mask the area where the stencil is overlapping because I know I'm going to make a mess here and want to get any of the stuff that I'm going to put on there which is molding paste onto the, the uh, math man guy. So this is a crafters workshop molding paste and it's called antique gold but it's it's not gold it's copper <laughs> and you know how I feel about copper copper is my favorite um, it's kind of a bronzy goldy coppery color not not as orange as copper can be sometimes but definitely an awesome color and I'm using a kind of pointy uh, palette knife so that I can turn it like at a 45 degree angle and scrape across the stencil so that I'm not completely covering everything. I want that that uh, dark blue in the background to show through and give me some shadowy effect, but I also want to add this kind of a highlight effect by putting on this gold color. And it's, it's taming and toning down that really dark shell image while also making it just look cool. It's shiny and shimmery and just enough metallic without going overboard on metallic so that, you know, it's too blingy for a guy or whatever. It's just too blingy. And I did the same thing um, up here at the top with the little center of the shell that I put on there. If you didn't want to use the whole shell, you could just use a little section of it. And it still looks really cool. Um, I put that up there because of composition. I think that things should be, you should have three things and not just two. And it just felt like it needed something else after I put the big shell on. I'm like, eh, this is not right. So then when I put that other one up at the top, I was happy with my composition at that point. It gives the eye a way to travel around the canvas kind of in a circle without falling off. And it just, it just is better. It's just better. That's all I can say. So then I took some more of that night colored paint and this is a water brush, a water tank brush, has water in the handle and I can squeeze that little red section and let the water come out. And I just took like a little drop of that paint onto my palette and then I watered it down a lot with the water in the brush. And then I'm just using that to shadow everything. And this adds a lot of depth to what you're doing. It's, it, uh, it makes the, the things that are stuck on appear as if they are integrated into the project and that they're part of everything. I'm, sh I'm shadowing around the outside edge. I'm also shadowing inside the image to give it a little bit more dimension. And I let some of my paint and collaging go over that white image so that it wasn't just like this stuck on sticker there. I need, I want it to, to feel like it's part of the composition. Also, because this is a stenciled image, there are a lot of breaks in the lines because if you didn't have those little breaks, then the, as you're cutting the stencil, it would just fall apart and then this image would fall out because there's nothing to attach it. So having those breaks keeps the stencil intact, but also it makes it look like a stencil. So I took my black Posca pen and I went around and kind of filled in those holes so that the image appears to be less of a stencil and more of like a, an illustration. I could have made an illustration like this, but I really liked the image when I saw it when it first came out at Stencil Girl Products and I thought that's really cool and that's what I need to make math art. So there was one little area up here that was bothering me. It didn't have a symbol in it. It didn't have anything in it and it just felt empty. So I decided to just go ahead and stencil it directly um, with this one quarter and one half um, symbols. This is a, a deco art stencil from Andy Skinner as well as the, uh, the other one, the Nautilus shell is an Andy Skinner design from deco art. And I used it to just uh, add the, those little symbols there. And then I added a few other ones the, with the mini symbol stencil from Kat Kerr that goes along with all the math stencils. There's, there's uh, a 6x6, six six, there's a 4x4, four four, there's a 9x12, there's another 9x12. Um, 
that she designed all at the same time with this type of uh, symbology. So then I wanted to kind of do something with these numbers. I wanted them to stand out a little bit. I wanted to give them a highlight. So I'm using a white fine tip Posca pen and going around the numbers. And it's not dramatic, but it's definitely a detail that makes what you're looking at more interesting. There's like a little highlight. Plus it's kind of cleaning up the numbers and making them look a little bit more, uh, I don't know, uniform and refined. Because I stenciled them, they were kind of, uh, I don't know. The paint goes underneath the stencils a little bit on the edges, no matter how careful you are. And it gives that stenciled look. And this looks more like um, they were meant to be cleaned up and refined, I guess. I don't know. My Posca pen was running out of um, Posca penness. <laughs> it, it, it's got acrylic ink inside. It was running out, so I ended up having to switch pens. I just got tired of fussing with it, so I did end up switching to the very last new one I have, so I'm going to need to get to order some more off of Amazon. I buy them in a three pack, three at a time. They come from China or something. It takes them a long time to get here. So I need to remember to place an order because I just cannot live without white Posca pins. I think I would be done for if I didn't have them. <laughs> so of course the numerals also have some breaks in them where the stencil is. And I end up filling those breaks in with the black pin because they were kind of bothering me. I don't know why, but they were. So I'm happy with all the numbers. And what else do I do? Hmm. Oh yes, yeah, so I decided to add some highlights at some point. And I guess I'm not getting to that yet. I'm still doing a little bit of, sh of shadows again with the, the blue paint and the water brush. Having the water brush makes it easy to blend. So that's the reason that I use it because it's nice and moist. It stays moist. You don't have to dip it in the water every time. So then I'm using some of the white ink and I end up switching to white paint at some point because there's still some titanium white paint left on my uh, palette to kind of go in between the areas on the stencil and kind of add a white highlight to make the um, nautilus shell stand out a little bit more. I don't want it to overpower the main focal image of the man, but I want it to still be something that you see, probably the second thing that you see when your eye is traveling around the canvas. So I'm making sure that it's it has enough interest that you would want to look at it. This is where I switch to paint. And it's a little bit brighter than the um, watered down ink was. So this canvas probably took me two and a half hours from start to finish till I was happy with it. You know, if you're, if you're doing something like this, you need to just keep playing with it until it makes you happy. And I tell you what, quinacridone gold glaze makes me happy. <laughs> So I like it now. I, I wasn't too thrilled with it at the end of the show, but after I messed with it for a while and added some shadows and some details and that glaze, I was much happier. So I think it's cool and I hope the person that it's for really enjoys it and thinks it's as cool as I do. Of course, you guys can't see the shimmeriness of the molding paste either. But you will be able to in the close-ups, I think, which will be coming at the end. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forgive it, forget to give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment or question below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And you can share this with uh, your favorite mathematician who might be interested in it if you want to. All those things help out my channel. Also, the um, products that I used will be listed in the description box below if you'd like to purchase some of those. 
Um, if it's an Amazon link, then I get a few cents to uh, help me get more stuff that I can show you on the channel. So what was my last thing? Oh, yes, I did add. So then I thought the white was too white <laughs> because I had, you know, put the glaze over everything. So I went and did a little bit more glazing over the top of that white just to to integrate it back in again while still making it. It still stands out, but it's not as white, white as it was. Then I just signed it and that was it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.